Hey, and welcome back to the podcast. We're here with Jeremy Weirden from bnbcalc.com. And Jeremy is a true advocate for the democratization of alternative asset classes. He was a basketball player at the University of North Carolina, and his current status is as an Airbnb investor. So we're going to hear all about business ownership, entrepreneurism, delayed gratification, and your key to freedom. So Jeremy, glad to be talking to you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Glad to have you. And right before the call, I checked out you on like LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, TikTok, places like that. And guys like you are so fun because it's almost scary watching what, what you're doing. Like you have all this energy and all this focus. So can you tell us about what you have going on? What makes you unique? Yeah. And I first want to preface, uh, you did say I played I played on UNC's JV team, which is uh, not as cool as as playing for the varsity team in University of North Carolina. So I want to I want to unhype myself a little bit uh, before we get going to this next level. But yes, yeah, so I've, I've got a lot going. I'm I'm 26 now. I'm a full time Airbnb investor. Uh, I've created a product that I use myself in my day to day operations uh, that I you know have built out so others can use it as well, which is uh, BNB Calc. And we've gotten you know a, a pretty uh, loyal user base. But yeah, I started my career in short-term rentals actually uh, doing boat rentals and largely leveraging other folks' properties in order to you know be able to scale the business and, and go full-time. So yeah, I'm very, very versed in the STR space and uh, it's been a fun ride. And it seems like it. And so how did you even, like you said a little bit there about like you, you were doing like boat rentals early on, but how did you even like decide to pursue this? How did you get to the point where you said, all right, this is the thing that I can uh, do full-time? Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to come back to when I graduated college 2019, I was working for a small uh, startup in New York City. And when COVID hit, uh, as what happened to a lot of startups at that time, got you know we got really nervous and, and scared and thought we were going to have a tough uh, fundraising climate. So pretty preemptively, my, my salary was cut uh, pretty materially to you know, $2,500 a month, which was not enough money for my apartment, nevertheless, my life. So I, I had I moved in back home with my parents uh, in North Carolina and was pretty, you know, I, I needed something. I needed to do new things. I needed some additional income stream. And honestly, at that point, I felt, I felt very kind of lost in, the, the, in just knowing that on a moment's notice, I could get a text from my boss saying, hey, you're your salary has been cut or, Hey, you're, I mean, I didn't get fired, but just knowing that on a moment's notice, you know, my life could completely change. So really at that time I was on a mission to be in control of my own destiny. And the way I, I first saw that was there was a lake not too far from where I grew up, where I knew there was demand for, for boat rentals. And I was also watching Ozarks. I don't know if you're familiar with the TV show Ozarks. Oh Yeah at the time but the topography and geography of, of the lake in missouri where, where they do their business dealings was similar to the one where i i wanted to do my business dealings so started a boat rental business bought a pontoon boat didn't really know the first thing about that but figured it out made it happen uh partnered with you know various lake houses that were also airbnbs and uh you know start was managing you know pretty quickly started managing airbnbs on behalf of of homeowners and really things took off from there uh you know over the course of a couple of years built out the portfolio also started buying properties when i bought i had to fundraise to buy so that's pretty unique experience fundraising and buying investment properties uh have a variety right now we're setting up three apartments uh that we're renting so we're renting and re-renting so i've really just been adding to the portfolio in a variety of ways uh even have a, a airstream camper that I have up on Airbnb, which is known as glamping for those not familiar with that concept. It's essentially like high end elevated camping experiences. Wanted to test that out. So have one of those. So I've really just every year been adding, keep going at it. And, and now kind of, you know, building software too, that, that helps myself and helps others as well. So it seems like a big part of your mindset is that you know there's a big problem in front of you, but it's just something to be figured out, right? Like boat rental business, I'm sure there's all sorts of like boat maintenance, insurance, uh, like the, you know, keeping the boat going, worried about someone getting injured, and it's just something to figure out. 
And so what you're saying is what happened with you was uh, you had uh, this um, you, this employment, the startup, and they they play games with you, right? They they cut your your payment, and you were kind of forced into again figuring out what uh, what to do next in order to uh, make ends meet. And so with all of your um, kind of like you see what's happened on, on the lake, you visualize it, you play with the boat rentals, you play with the glamping. Do you ever worry about kind of like being spread too thin? Because I worry about that with myself. Like I'll have some idea, I'll make this software, I'll do this project. And I'm like, it's kind of, I enjoy the chaos and it's like sometimes close to being unmanageable, but still sometimes works. But then, you know, you always hear about people say, well, just focus and only, uh, you know, concentrate on one thing. What's your response to that? And how do you kind of manage the the entrepreneurial ADD? Yeah, definitely. Great, great question. And uh, yeah, I would say it's definitely not for everybody. Uh, the the course I have taken, I I chose the route and I, you know, I set down it. And yeah, I just feel like it's just one day at a time, figure out one thing at a time. Definitely, you know, you want to build out bit different businesses, because at this point, I have a boat rental business. I have an Airbnb, you know, property management business. I have eight properties that we've bought, which are all their own entities and technically kind of their own businesses in, in, in a way. Uh, I have a software business and I actually also started a coaching business where I help others do what I've been able to do. So yeah, definitely a lot going on, but uh, yeah, really kind of focus on anything that I don't need to be doing on a daily basis, hiring others. So just really thinking, all right, what's a task that I'm doing right now that like I don't need to be, I shouldn't be doing and, and hiring. So I have a team of virtual assistants who help take care of a lot of the repeatable tasks uh, I'm hiring someone this summer to manage and oversee the boat rental business. So for me, it's really just like trying to focus my time on what I want to be doing. And, and then, you know, anything that I don't feel like I need to be doing, uh, figuring out how to automate that task. Interesting. So it's, it seems like the, the aspect of your business that is kind of the exciting thing that is what people talk about is the piling on of new things. But then the backside of that, that people don't see that isn't really as fun or talked about is kind of the then offloading those tax tasks onto others. So that way they get the work done for you that way that's less on your plate. And so it seems like it's kind of a, this, this continuous battle of adding new ideas, adding new things, but then also taking things away. And, you know, maybe that means someone else runs it or maybe it means someone else sells it. And so uh, what's cool about sort of uh, your your lifestyle here is it's like the, similar to how like Gary Vee or Tim Ferriss or Grant Cardone or all these guys, they'll just say like, this is just how I operate. They'll be like, I'm not trying to get you to jump in on, on this, but if you're if you're curious, if this excites you, if this is something that is, you're drawn to, then here is a guy who does it and here's how it's done. And so uh, have there been any uh, kind of scary moments, like with all this kind of risk and adventure that you're a part of? Was there any point when you kind of like felt like quitting or were just sort of in, in a panic about something unexpected? Uh, I mean, not really. I, I think at this point, my skin has gotten pretty, uh, pretty, I don't want to say deep, whatever. I, I don't, I, you thick know, I'm, skin. thick skin. Yeah. Jeez. Took, took me a second there. Um, yeah. At this, at this point, I mean, for an example, I got a call this past summer that two of our boats had crashed into each other. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna say that's an everyday thing. I mean, we've had the, the 300 person parties, at, at at our properties like you know we've kind of been through it all uh don't get me wrong knock on wood i'm sure there's there's things we haven't kind of been through at this point but you just kind of get used to you know used to stuff happening uh and just being able to respond to it and and make sure everything you know everything's taken care of and and, and handle different situations as best as possible uh something you definitely get used to but yeah i'm not going to say there's no stress and anxiety um uh, it's just kind of part of it but you know today i I just came back from the, I literally been at the gym since 9am. I did take a few calls there. So it's like, you know, I live the life I want to live, you know, I can choose to enter, do new things or not do new things. So, you know, I have a lot of freedom. And obviously, there's there's pros and cons to, to anything in life. 
Yeah. And, and, uh, and I know that a lot of your, uh, your kind of thought process is the delayed gratification and saying like, you know, if I got this big, uh, this big payday or this big success in my business, I could cash it out and go on a vacation and have fun, but it's, it's more fun for someone like you to put that back into the business and start some kind of new project. And a lot of what I'm picking up from you is you're big on the people, right? You're talking about uh, taking phone calls at the gym. You're talking about the different like employees. You're talking about uh, hooking up the boat rentals with the other Airbnb hosts on the lake. So that way they could provide that. So can you unpack that a little bit? Like, what do you think that you have going on as far as the peopling that others aren't doing as much of? Yeah, well, I, I think I'm someone who understands that people are everything. And, you know, connecting with, with people is the most valuable thing there is in the world. Uh, obviously money, you know, you know, money is, helps do things, you know, it helps give you freedom it it helps you buy material goods, but ultimately it comes down to, to the people, the connections. Uh, and, and, you know, that just has so many different avenues where, where that rings true. But yeah, I mean, I just focused, I mean, I, I made a decision a couple of years ago where I said, look. I'm going to focus on the highest cash on cash return opportunities possible that are presented to me at the time. And by doing so, I will, you know, in a year, I will be able to essentially not have to ever worry about a nine to five ever again. And then from there, that's going to give me the freedom to do what I want to do in life, uh, which, you know, example, the software I built that, that was, that was a passion. That's a passion project. You know, that's something I wanted to do kind of going back to my old startup days uh, I've always, you know, I wanted to do startups. I wanted to do different companies. Airbnb was just, is, has been an avenue for me to have freedom to do things I want to do. So I think it's just really being thoughtful about what is your eventual goal? What are the specific things that are going to help you get there? And then who are you going to need along the line to support you? Because you can't do everything yourself. And, you know, figuring out that puzzle, uh, whatever it may be, uh, can help lead to to your success. Fabulous. What is my goal? Where do I want to end up? What is the path I will take there? And then what people will be with me on that path to help us get to that point? And uh, so we've talked about sort of all these things about like goal setting and, uh, you know, people are everything and like pursuing your dreams and kind of jumping into uh, your own business. Because when you have that regular employment, there's definitely a, a cap. There's a ceiling on your money, on your time. And when you have a business, you can, uh, like the sky is the limit, right? And you can really yeah. uh, overwork yourself temporarily for a, a short season, but then also kind of create all these things that work on their own. So do you think that, are, and we were, so we've already talked about some of these sort of success principles already. So do you think, is there like another, like really cool, helpful success principle that you think that you do really well that we haven't mentioned yet? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think the way I'm wired, uh, you know, helps lead to success. You know, again, someone who I kind of like my my belief in life is like, I, I want to leave everything on the field and do as much as I can do. Whereas, you know, some folk want to get to a point where they can live, you know, the exact lifestyle they want to live. So I think, I mean, being true to yourself uh, is very important. That's, I, th I think that, you know, is a very high, high level, but again, just being true to yourself, knowing who you are, uh, understand being a, a cognizant of your own strengths and weaknesses. And that's something I'm always trying to be better at. And I know there's a lot of things I personally need to work on now that, you know, I employ other people. That's something that rings true more than ever is, being self like self acknowledging and and understanding you know the way you're communicating with somebody might might not be the best way possible and there are things you know different approaches you can take to your everyday life that are going to help lead to to your success i love it so know who you are which kind of requires a lot of introspection and requires that kind of constant feedback loop and uh, so you're you're on kind of a, a fun path here, right? You're uh, kind of doing this whole thing where the the business is kind of the self expression of yourself, and sometimes maybe some things come to the surface where you say, "Well, I need to do better with people, or my communication, or my my delegating, or or, or whatever it is." And so you have this software, you have this Airbnb calculator. So can you tell us what that is and and why short term rental landlords everywhere should be using it? Yeah. So 
you know, if you, I don't know if you've heard the online echo chambers about Airbnb right nowadays, you know, big thing that's trending is, is the Airbnb bust or Airbnb bust. And uh, a lot of people who may have been making a lot of money during COVID during kind of the travel rebound are now losing money. And, you know, there's a variety of reasons we can get into, you know, specific supply and demand, et cetera, et cetera. But largely what I've seen is that a super high percentage of Airbnb investors do not do any sort of financial analysis or market analysis or anything when they make an investment decision. They maybe, maybe they hear their realtor says, oh, this is a good Airbnb for Airbnb, or this is a good area for Airbnb. And that is the extent of their due diligence process. They don't look at how they need to furnish the property, what amenities they need to provide. They do no research at all. So I would say that a large percentage of operators do no research, no financial analysis. Uh, so what I mean, really just out of mission is I think, you know, people to put themselves in successful situations need to analyze properties. They need to analyze markets. They need to know the amenities that they need to provide. They need to understand what the revenue and expense items, like how do you calculate your revenue? How do you calculate your expenses? You know, there's a variety of different inputs that go into your expenses. You know, do you have a homeowner's association fee? Do you not have a homeowner's association? Do you, what is your property tax, et cetera, et cetera. So really our goal at a high level is helping people understand the variables to that determine their profit. So, you know, knowing if something's going to be profitable or unprofitable, also just running uh, property analysis at scale. Previous to this app, I used an Excel spreadsheet and I, I knew there was demand for an app like this because I, I put an Excel spreadsheet on my social media and I sold thousands of them. And to which me, I'm like, you know, this Excel spreadsheet is not very cool. I've wanted to build an app to do this quicker for myself. Now that I know that others also want this, I'm going to personally, and again, this kind of boils down to, you know, I, I built out the Airbnb business to give myself freedom to do things I wanted to do having that short-term rental income allowed me to invest in an app, you know, apps, apps aren't free, you know, the things, things take investments and kind of form, but I know that there's going to be a market that wants what I'm doing because I've already seen them buy what I see as an inferior pro product. So really our mission is to help people do that first level. Uh, if you want to go farther than that, I do have a coaching program where I've, I've helped 35 folk at this point uh, launch Airbnbs. So not only make sure they're doing the financial analysis the right way, but just doing everything the right way from furnishing to setting up the operations to, you know, those who want to hire virtual assistants and fully automate the day to day, really just everything, you know, very much hands-on handholding through the process. That's kind of the abstraction above the calculator application. But uh, yeah, in, in a nutshell, it's really our goal mission. My mission at this point is to help people, do things the right way. Because yes, if you do things the wrong way, and there are a lot of folk doing things the wrong way, you're not automatically going to make money on Airbnb. And I think that was kind of a huge misconception for the like the last couple of years when really any willy nilly person could, you know, I could take a photo of the couch behind me with my phone and put it up on Airbnb and somehow someone's going to want to stay there. <laughs> but that's just that's just not the case nowadays. You have to do things the right way. And this is really interesting to think about because there's there are different angles to to digest what you said, right? If someone wants to literally follow in your footsteps, there's the Airbnb advice, but there's also the entrepreneurial advice and the software advice. So what happened was you you, you saw this problem, which was that with the short term rentals with the Airbnbs, people just had all these unexpected factors. They weren't running the numbers correctly. So maybe they were making stupid financial decisions, having razor thin margins, just not accounting for what they needed to be aware of. And so then you had this Excel spreadsheet to ha have it all figured out. But uh, as you and I know, Jeremy, with Excel spreadsheets, there's is like no instruction manual, right? And it's always it's always awkward. You're like, I gotta go to this tab and this column and click on it in a certain way. It's it's 
like always like 90 percent of what you want and it just requires all this kind of just awkwardness so you said well the excel spreadsheet gets me there but then i really need just some kind of uh, brain dead point and click app so that way i don't have to think about it but then you create this tool for yourself and now suddenly there's all these other people who can also benefit from it and what's also great about that is with uh, with any kind of sort of business opportunity, there's that degree of if someone wants to do it their own way or if someone's already doing it a certain way, you, you have to like un, un twirl what they were doing and kind of redo it their way. So software makes it cool because they can just plug it in to their new or existing business and solve the same problem that you had. And then if they say, whoa, this app makes it way easier. I can't believe I was making these mistakes with the the fee structure and the furniture, et cetera. Then they can, since they've kind of got a little bit of a taste of what you provide, then they can kind of join your uh, your coaching program there. And so this seems like a much needed tool. And as we're kind of winding down uh, our conversation, you mentioned a couple of times here about kind of the the Airbnb problem. And we've we touched on it a little bit, but it's kind of a, a fun conversation topic because I know that personally, like pre-pandemic, I'd probably use like two Airbnbs a year and it was better than a than a hotel, right? It was it was cheaper and better location and better everything. But then as you pointed out, kind of pandemic and then post-pandemic. Airbnbs kind of turned into a, sort of a like a running internet joke, right? Where you see like the price as many times like higher than a hotel and they have all these weird rules like we well, have to do the dishes before you leave and the laundry and take out the garbage and you're thinking, so I'm paying more and I'm doing all this work for for the, the person renting to me. So in these last few minutes here, can you kind of tell us about maybe some like Airbnb do's and don'ts and just like ways for prospective Airbnb hosts to do a better job? Yeah. So the first you got to pick your strategy. So Airbnb is not just you buy a house or you own a house and you put it up on Airbnb. Uh, there are a variety of strategies. There's buying obviously. So buy to own rental arbitrage where you rent and re-rent there's co-hosting, which is managing a property for somebody else. And then there's glamping, which is these high, these elevated camping experiences such as the Airstream I have. So first thing you got to do is pick a strategy, uh, whatever it may be. So let's say, you know, you're going to buy, if you're going to buy a property, cool. Uh, then what you need to do is just your fundamental market research. There's software out there to make, make the market research easier. And then there's uh, software out there such as BNB Calc to help you analyze a property for profit. But yeah, you need to just make sure you are underwriting the property the right way. You have a good understanding of the fundamentals of the market. Is the supply in this market growing and outpacing demand growth? Or is supply going downward, whereas demand is going up? Because if you're seeing that, that's like a very good leading indicator for you know potential out out potential out potential potential out out earning uh, in the long period, like doing better than you expect to do. So that's the first way. And then you know, setting it up, you got to set it up the right way. You can't just you know the days of you know any wit like the days of using your grandma's furniture and taking out your phone and snapping photos and, and being able to be extremely profitable are over. Like I'm, I'm here to say it, those days are over. You have to take high definition photos. You have to have a great listing description. And then you have to man, you know, people are going to give you five stars. If you're great at communication, you attend to their needs and you're continually improving the property. So if you want to do extremely well, you just have to follow the process to a T and, you know, that's, that's my, my, my advice to anybody is pick a strategy, follow the process. And, you know, there are different folk who, you know, give coaching and, and guidance on different strategies. So I would highly recommend just, you could, you know, there's tons of free information on YouTube, just learn the process and execute on it. I love it. And it's almost like a video game, the way that you put, you say, you say, you pick a strategy, and then there's like a logical step by step sequence of different decisions to be made at different levels along the way. That way, you're not just spinning your wheels. That way, you're not just making it up as you go along. And it's also frustrating when you get overloaded with like a million different decisions. But instead, if you say, well, on step one, there's the, one of these four decisions. Step two, there's one of these four decisions. Then maybe there's these things to then do research on. That makes it much more doable, right? That makes it much more uh, start to finish. And uh, you're just making me think about like, 
yeah, there's there's all these these ways that Airbnb hosts can uh, be just continuously improving is I think the phrase that you use. And like, you know, when you mention things like a virtual assistant, I mean, like I've stayed at Airbnbs where I sent a, a message and just didn't hear back from the person for like a day or two, if ever. But then if the virtual assistant was right there on the ball dealing with whatever issue, there's a way for these uh, to have a better uh, customer experience, but then also to have a more hands off business that's fun and scalable. And then you can just focus on refining the system, new opportunities, bigger picture, all that cool stuff. And so if someone here has been uh, amazed and impressed by the advice and the stories that you said, I know you said that, you know, YouTube is a, a fun place to start as far as looking into this Airbnb stuff. But if they want to know from you specifically, they want to contact you or know about your businesses, what's some good contact information or even better next steps after listening to this podcast? Yeah. So follow me on social media. Uh, I would say Instagram. I mean, I have 115,000 followers on Instagram. I have a decent following on TikTok. And I think that shows that I'm, I'm providing valuable information. That's what I try to do is just provide valuable information every day, things I'm learning, I post about. So I would say definitely check me out on Instagram. You can DM me uh, if you, you know, I'm, my DMs are open. So for anyone who wants to reach out, uh, Instagram will be the best place for that. But definitely, I yeah, look at my social channels because I'm providing, I'm really trying to provide as much value as I can. And it, and it shows. And that's a good mindset to have, right? Instead of just taking or instead of saying, well, if I give this or get that back, just focus on adding value, make it a habit. And then uh, that's just part of the whole system that you have going on. So we're speaking with Jeremy Weirden. That's last name, W-E-R-D-E-N. So find him on Instagram. That's a logical next step. And then as far as like websites or your companies, what are those? Yeah, so I really think my social media is my best website. Uh, we, I mean, BNB Calc, definitely be, you know, spelled it like Airbnb with Calc at the end that that you know you can go directly there get a free trial we have a free trial so people can test it out if they like it cool if they don't like it totally okay too uh but definitely you're not going to know until you try it so go to bnb calc for for the free trial and that's that's true with anything in life right jeremy like you can spend all day every day imagining playing the what is wondering what could have been but you don't know until you try it and you take those risks and you have fun and you see what the results are and you see what sort of adventure path that leads you on to so add jeremy weirden on instagram he's got 115,000 followers let's get him to 116,000 and more while he's delivering that value <laughs> yeah so as we're uh completely wrapping up our conversation here jeremy so it's good to end with a bang so do you have any lasting words of advice favorite quote or like advice you wish you'd gotten 10 years ago is anything come to mind in that category yeah i mean i would say a, a quote that i i reference a lot is uh like uh i actually now it's a quote i think of a lot but i can't remember the exact quote uh prep preparation uh, preparation and hard works beats talent when talent fails to work hard. So and I think that rings true for whatever you're doing. You know, obviously being smart or being gifted at something gives you an advantage. But if you don't go through the process and put in the hours, you're just not going to be successful. And I think that's an overall theme for everything I've done. I've figured out the processes, you know, definitely at first it takes longer to learn how to do things. And, but once you prepare yourself, once you put in the work, it gets a lot easier. So whatever you're doing, put in the preparation, put in the hard work, it'll, you know, that investment will provide, you know, return 10x uh, as long as you are committed and, and determined. <laughs>